Hello, hello. I have super exciting episode for you guys today. I have my amazing client, Sarah, with us today. And we're going to really dive deep into, this is going to be episode, a case study, a success story, a story of transformation. But it's also going to be really powerfully packed with really valuable insights. And we're going to talk about how to get 300 high ticket, high caliber, perfect fit clients from just one freebie. So if that is of interest, keep on listening. Welcome, Sarah. So excited to have you here. Before we start, I'd love you to introduce yourself and tell our audience who you are, what you do and who you help. Thank you so much, Elena. It's an honor for me to be here. I've listened to your podcast a lot and we've worked together for, you know me so well. And so for me being here, it's it's such an honor. And I know the kind of people you've had your, on your podcast. I'm so honored to, to also be in the same podcast with them. So thank you very much. Hello, everybody who's listening. So my name is Sarah Mobahamfad. I'm a business coach for leadership and executive coaches, or basically all these experts and professionals who work with high-level business professionals. And about me, I'm both Swiss and Iranian. I was born and raised in Iran, but most of my adult life, let's say, was spent in Switzerland. I live in Swiss Alps in the middle of nowhere in the mountains with my husband, who's British. And that is why I have such a strong connection with the UK. It's almost like another home country to me. And uh, yeah, so I'm actually an industrial engineer with a career in operations and supply chain management and strategic sourcing in construction machinery industry. I've spent over 10 years working for different companies, managing complex operations, multiple seven figure portfolios. I was involved in strategic sourcing, negotiation, production planning, et cetera. And that's pretty much my background. And I always wanted to start my own business. I loved art and fashion. So this was something I was passionate about. So in 2017, I founded a fashion brand, a luxury, a sustainable luxury brand. And that, that's a big story on its own, how I kind of, how it started. Um, it was a decision I made after like a, <laughs> losing my health and getting it back and not wanting to live a life of regret because nothing comes with guarantee. So that's how it all happened. But then... Although it was a business that I started passion, I fell out of love. I lost my passion. I knew I don't like it. I was just in it just for the sake of money, let's say. And I just didn't know how to get out of it. And during the pandemic, I started this side hustle of helping other businesses to grow, to go online, pivot the businesses. And I noticed I really enjoy working with people, consulting, mentoring, this human connection. And that's how I fell in love with coaching. And I also learned after a while that sometimes people have access to all the money, all the resources, the right strategy, but you still cannot succeed. And that has to do with the human behind the business. So I learned more about coaching. I got trained as an ICF certified coach. I got trained in psychology, neuroscience, leadership, all of these things. And I'm still obsessed with these topics. And so uh, until today, I have helped uh, over 140 businesses in different industries to start and grow. And I've also recently noticed from my calendar that I have coached over 300 individuals in the last couple of years in their growth journey, not necessarily businesses, but also leadership. And that's such an honor for me. So yeah, Amazing. that's pretty much where I am. <laughs> No, what an achievement. And I really want to celebrate and take this time to really celebrate this milestone. 300 businesses, but not just any businesses. We're talking high caliber, perfect fit type of businesses, businesses and the clients that you're so deeply excited to work with, high ticket clients. And that is really, really powerful. But before we kind of jump into where you are today, let's take our audience and let's go back to where it started. The time when we've met... Yeah. Um, you know, some time ago. And let's take it. Tell us about that moment where you were. Why were you looking for a coach? Like, take us to that moment. Yeah, it actually has an interesting story because I had a successful business relatively. And uh, when I was starting my coach training, ICF coach training, which is usually a year of intensive training, I even raised money by signing people into a like an e I was I was an e-commerce consultant, let's say back then. So I was able to do that and I was so excited about this. So, so I was transitioning from business consultant to business coach, according to the ICF guidelines. And I was so excited by what happened by the time I finished my ICF uh, like training, 
I was thinking I would be making a lot of money, getting a lot of clients at that point. But my business was, I was getting less and less clients. And I was like, what is going on? I am, I'm much more qualified right now. Why am I not getting the clients I want? And I was sensing that something had changed on my social media before when I was not certified, when I didn't have all that knowledge. I was just connecting with people on a personal level. And I was, uh, you know, people would understand my message on social media. But now that I knew more, I was talking the coach language, something, you know, I was reading all these books and getting all these trainings and my head was really and only talking to coaches. So that was affecting it. And I could see like, it was like the first week I thought like something's going to happen. Maybe you know, I think it was like January, uh, 2023, I think I was like, okay, it's January. It's going to get better. Second week. I was like, something is wrong. I'm not used to not getting client. I'm, I'm sure something is wrong. And yeah. I could sense like there is something about my communication is not, people do not understand what I do. It's and like, and let's just pause here for a second. This is really interesting for everyone listening. And this is such a common thing, especially people after they get qualified or they get training or certifications or courses, they think that should help me. I'm now more of an expert. Therefore, getting clients should be easier. But what we're actually seeing, it sometimes has the opposite effect. I call it a coach curse. It's just yeah. when you become too advanced for your audience and you have this coach speak that actually your ideal per people not quite understanding. Um, so if someone's listening, maybe they're finding themselves in the same situation that they maybe got certifications, got courses, got knowledge, but actually that's not reflecting in the sales. It's very typical and very common. So let's, let's talk more about that moment for you where you just certified, you kind of had clients before you got this additional certification and you were like, wow, this should help me. But actually you found yourself in a business where there was a gap in clients and actually sales went down and declined rather than go up. Yeah. Yeah. And it feels so bad as a coach that like you, you, you know, nobody without your clients, and right when you kind of, it's, it's, you, you're supposed to be in your most pr like proudest moment. I was, I felt like, so it was affecting my confidence. Let's say I, I cannot exactly put words on it, but the feeling of like, there was a bit of shame, like, oh no, I have all these degrees and experience. I used to be good and ooh, what's going on? Did I make the wrong decision by getting certified, learning all these things I'm so excited about? So there was a lot of that. And and also just to point out, and I think your story specifically speaks to that, and this is going to be so relevant for so many people, you had a very successful corporate career. Yeah. A very successful corporate career. Then you had a successful luxury brand with so many lessons inside it. We'll show, uh, hopefully we'll dive deep into some of the big lessons and mistakes you've made, but also the key lessons as an entrepreneur that you've gathered from that. And here you are with your next uh, iteration or your next chapter of life, really focusing on what brings you meaning and joy. And you're like, wow, why is this not working? I've spent years studying. I was successful in my job. I was so, you know, I was managing people, managing big projects, seven figure type of projects. And now I'm doing this on my own. Why does it feel so hard? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it was so difficult because when you build a career like that, all your friends, everyone you're connected to is also, kind of successful and those days I I still needed a lot of work to do on my mindset my self-worth and my performance the amount of money I make were connected so it was really affecting my mental health and I had learned some lessons from my my fashion business in the first year that I was so I was not hiring coaches because I assumed I should know everything I don't need coaches it's, I know I I have it I have the, the experience I did I went to business school what do these coaches have to teach to me so I didn't because I didn't understand the kind of support they, they would give me and one year past and you have an MBA right yes yes I also I have a master degree in supply chain management I have you know I'm, I'm an engineer all of that typical Middle Eastern background you just collect all these certifications and stuff um so I was thinking like, you know, I, uh, I'm i supposed to know this and I quit that corporate job. I, I quit that sort of fashion business to, to be successful. And now where I am at the, like the lowest of low, not making much money, 
And, and also just to point out that this stage and imagine you are you know, successful, you have this background of all best education in the world. You've traveled the world, you come from Iran, you live in Switzerland, you got education in Europe, like the worlds of experience, working for companies, making a lot of money, being surrounded by really successful people, and then going to venture, uh, venture by yourself, your own second business on your own. And then also competing with people who are way less qualified, yeah. less experienced, sometimes teenagers with camera, just really good dancers, you know, they're fantastic with the trends on social media. You think, oh my word, I am losing business to this. And this is who I now have to compete with. And I think that is also is what affects so many people. Uh, and I'm sure that was kind of the same thing for you, where you look around, and you think, what? Like you were so focused on those people, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. It's, it was like, I was also watching a lot of other people, how they are, I don't want to judge anyone, but I was like, I have so many qualifications. I cannot grow. I'm stuck here. And these people who have like less of education than me, I mean, not necessarily the dancers, but there were other, like we just had, did some sort of online coaching course and called themselves coaches, you know, everyone can do that. So I was feeling like, what is wrong? And so, so there was a lot of work I had to do on myself. But then at the same time, I also one day kind of reflected on, on like what is happening. And I noticed, OK, I know what I'm doing when it comes to coaching. I know the work, but people don't exactly understand what I do. My problem is a messaging problem. Uh, I'm I'm not very good at communicating the value of my work. I'm not very, I don't really know what I'm doing sometimes. I'm not very good at sort of at bringing the right person to my business. I'm just pretty much throw, throwing spaghetti at the wall and sort of wait to see what happens. Pretty much like uh, looking at what everyone else is doing, trying that. So, and this was not, this, this created a lot of lack of, how to say, un, un, it was very unstable, let's say. That's how mm. things felt for me. So when it became clear to me that, okay, your problem is a communication. And those days, I didn't even know the word is messaging. It's like, oh, that's how it's called. I have to look for a coach that can help me with messaging. I also do not want one of those coaches who are going to give me a lot of journaling and positive affirmation and this kind of surface level stuff. I want like support on what I, I need right now. And so I was searching, I looked at everyone and uh, and then I, your offer, I, I think I, I, I watched one of your masterclasses first and listened to your podcast. I'm like, okay, this is the right person for me. So that's how, how it all started. And that's what we worked on together to, to focus on like, what am I exactly doing? How to communicate the value of my work to the right person. And basically, yeah, that, that's, yeah. That's and I want to just highlight a couple of things in that story. I think what's powerful is you had a sales gap or gap in sales and this uncertainty for two weeks, two, three weeks. Yeah. And what's powerful about this is you did not sit there and think, you know what, if I just keep doing what I've been doing before, throw the spaghetti in the wall, I'm seeing it works for others. So I'll just copy what they do without seeing the actual what's hiding underneath in the logic and hope that they will work. Or maybe suddenly things will get better overnight. You didn't do that. You immediately said, hey, I have a problem. And I think this is where successful entrepreneurs like you really is what differentiate of success. They don't sugarcoat their problem. Successful entrepreneurs like super honest with themselves. Hey, I don't know what it's called, but I need help. And this is where you even understand that it's communication. It's the way I explain things. It's the way I write things. It's the way I write caption, copy, the way I speak. Everything I say that's what it is. And this is messaging. And it's true, messaging, lots of people quite get confused what that actually is. Effective messaging is all your communication in your business. Yeah. Uh, from sales conversations, from sales copy, to masterclasses, to what you write on social media, to what you translate in your speaking engagements. It's everything you say. It's your universe of communication. And what I want to highlight is you the type of person that say, you know, I need help. I'm going to look around everyone who is what they're doing. I'm going to start shopping and look at all the coaches and business coaches, you name it. And I'm going to find the person that gives me exactly with an expertise that I want. I don't want fluff. At, you don't, I, you, I know you didn't need a rara motivation. You don't need to pump up. You needed real concrete uh, support and real action. And that's really powerful. You know, that's what differentiates the people that are successful. It's when they in that gap of two weeks, they said, no, 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 I'm getting help.
and I'm getting the best help. And I think that's so powerful. Yes. And also that I, I had this a strong sense in myself that this is not just a two week of slow months. This something is, is wrong with the foundations of my business. I could really sense it. And I, I, I took action. And because I remember, you know, in my first business, I wasn't, I was very slow in taking action. It was costing me a lot of time, a lot of money. I lost a lot of money. And then most of my efforts back after that was basically covering for the money I'd lost. And I didn't want that to happen this time. And now people who know me, I'm a fast action taker. If, if I see something has to happen, it's going to happen. It's just, I'm not going to wait on it. And there's also something else I've, I've learned is getting used to doing things that are uncomfortable. I don't need to enjoy things anymore. I, I mean, of course, joy is very important, but if I have to do something that feels right, and that something is not necessarily easy or fun or I don't know. <laughs> like it, I, I don't need to, to wait for that. I just do it. And this is something that has changed the game for me. Yes, that's so powerful. Uh, what a great lesson. I think that's why sometimes we look at our life and we say how everything just makes perfect sense and it comes in the right place. You know, sometimes, you know, hindsight is, of course, best 2020, but it is like your first business has taught you lessons to say, hey, you got to be quick. Yeah. You cannot wait to get support because you're just going to be one year later and no further in your business. And guess what? You're one year older. You probably lost money. You certainly lost time. Get help. Get it sorted. And I think those the reason why you were able to take action so quickly in that two-week period of time is because you did have that experience in business first time. Yeah. And yeah. I think this is what people listening is, you know, the best way to learn and learn on mistakes of other people is do that. And I certainly know for myself, one of my problems early on was also getting help. I think the really hardest thing is to get support and allow yourself to be supported. And we do this as women, you know, that could be a, a babysitters, childcare, a psychologist, business coach, like allow yourself to be held and supported by other people. Yeah. And it's not easy. I'm not pretending to say it's easy, but it's so fundamental. And once we all get to the stage where actually we can just, someone else can really help us, help us on our journey, help us with our dreams, um, it be, things really change. Exactly. So powerful. So really great. And then, so a couple of things. And of course, that was the point we've met, you joined the Powerhouse CEO program, and this is where our focus has really been as building the messaging, but also building systems and building simplicity in the business. Let's talk, let's fast forward yeah. to now, to where you are and tell us more about what fe business feels like right now. It feels grounded. Maybe that's the word for it. I'm a person, you know, people are different. I'm one of those people who need a lot of routine, a structure, process, something, you know, I can follow. This is what makes me feel grounded. And it, it, it helps me build more certainty, stability. And I notice when you have like a very complex business, it's very difficult to create that. And in order to, not only for myself, but also for clients, simplicity when you're a one person business, you know, it is just a VA, a few people helping you up. It's pretty much a very small business. Simplicity is very important because, every, you know, you can only remember so much. How, how much can our brain handle? So I knew that, OK, at this point in my life, I'm not planning to create like a like a big company with 200 employees and massive sort of I want something lean and simple that could fit into my lifestyle. And that business needs to be very simple. So it has to be uh, like a, a business that doesn't have so many products. I also had learned that lesson from my fashion business. We had a lot of jewelry and different designs and it's just handling so many products that was taking a lot of energy from me. And with fashion business, it was not so easy to do this, but I knew in this business, I don't want to have too many offers. I don't want to have too many uh, products. One system that works, one system that actually brings people in, Make, creates that connection, that sort of trust, and then offering one thing that works for, for these individuals. So making a very personal business. So this is something that I wanted to create for myself. And that's what I have right now. I have one freebie. I do not have hundreds of freebie. I have one freebie. Of course, I keep looking at it, tweaking it, updating. One masterclass every uh, third Wednesday of every month, I do this live webinar. 
okay, a few times a year, I also do a networking event with a business partner, partner of mine, but that's more of a fun thing we do, to be honest, to bring people in. But basically, it's just one freebie, one masterclass, one live event. And then I don't have many offers. I, base, I love to work with people on one-on-one -on -one basis. That's basically my goal. And I do have a small group program. So one group program, like one one-on-one -on -one offer for a limited number of people. And every now and then, if I'm in the mood, maybe two times a year, I also have some kind of like a course, a small program, like an intensive thing. But it's basically this. And I have the same message all over. You know, I have my PDF is, is with the same message. It's like how to get five clients, how to get... How, how to get your first five clients, how to get your next five clients. It's the, it's the same thing, but on the different levels of depth. So they, that is basically what I'm doing right now. Yeah. Isn't that powerful? And just everyone listening is like, think about all successful businesses, Chanel, Amazon, Apple. If you look at them as companies, they're very simple in its structure. They're not complicated. Apple, the most valuable company in the whole world. Highest capitalization in stock market has seven products. That's it. Seven products. So when you have 50 offers, the question is, <laughs> Apple just have seven. So there's power in simplicity. Simplicity is what scales. Simplicity is what gives you control over your life, gives you a lot of freedom. And complexity is what causes burnout. And also you can get lost in complexity because you don't know what you should be doing you know, it just gets become, could be become really overwhelming. But I think what your story also highlights is you choose the type of business you want. Isn't that powerful? That as a creator, as a CEO, you run your own business. You decide, hey, one-to-one -one clients inspire me. I get excited by that. You know, in a small group coaching program, that's what I want. And I want simplicity. You define that. And I think we'll, we'll talk more about this, but how, what powerful business you've set up right now where you're fully in control. You know, one of the things that we, that we should have mentioned is that in, when, we, we, when you've met me, when, we, when you joined, before you joined, you really didn't know where your next client was coming from, right? That is also a level of uncertainty and fear to say, I don't know the truth to tell. I don't know where my next client is coming from. And also a lot of people resonate is a lot of people will have sales target. They have like, oh, I want to make 20K, 50, whatever the number is, who cares? But they have a goal, but they actually underneath it, they have no concrete steps, no real action plan that don't, don't actually know how to get there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I remember that feeling of not knowing it's so, so difficult, not knowing like, who, who, who is, who is this client? Is this going to be a nice person? I would enjoy working. Is this going to be someone I just have to put up with? Is this going to be a person who's uh, who's able to, to sort of make this investment of time and money or not? So this, there was a lot of that. But now I've also learned, I mean, learned to say no to some clients in order to make this shift. And also it's like, for me, it's clear where the next client is coming from. I already know. And, and uh, I have a PDF. Some people will come to my sort of, universe through that uh, some people will, uh, will come to meet me through my masterclass on, on a Wednesday but everyone who will meet me at right now has already consumed some of my content this is how they're coming and even you know in the past I used to sort of work basically on based on referrals now even when I get referrals I really want them to go through that system because I really want them to watch the masterclass and and uh, read my stuff because this shows to, to them it shows this is how I work Correct. And I think what, you know, people, if you think about, well, if masterclass is all it takes, surely everyone would have done it and would be doing it and having the success. And what really makes it di different and what makes it unique, of course, we've crafted this masterclass and the yeah. system together, is that it's perfectly designed for you and your business. So what it actually does, it's a beautiful filtering system. So think about like a water going through a filter where we filter out and we only want to see perfect ideal clients because one of the things that was so important to you throughout your journey and that we talked so much about is you wanted, you were wanted to work with right people, the people that you just, you cannot wait to work in, people that experienced, talented, ambitious, action takers, you know, uh, really high powered executive and leadership coaches that are really high caliber people that you just want to surround yourself with. And that was the desire. And that was the part of the, you know, so yes, there's 300 clients and it's a, such an amazing achievement, but also what's important, that's not any type of clients. This is clients that 
set your soul on fire, isn't it? And I think exactly. the system is designed is to do that so that you're fully in control. And we'll talk more about this control, how much money you make, how many clients come into your world and what type of clients you actually get to work with. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And if you ask me what is the like most important thing to you is actually the type of clients because it's not only that they invest in my program, it's I invest time and money in, with them too. I'm, it's, it's a partnership basically. So it looks like from outside that the client buys your services, but basically coach and client are creating something together. That relationship is very important. And early on, before I have all these things figured out, I was basically working with whoever is willing to pay me. It was basically that. I just want, want to sort of get, gain experience. And I noticed like, hmm, with some clients, I, I don't really enjoy this. I, it's not exactly what I want to do. And I was really reflecting, okay, what excites me? I noticed working with ambitious people excites me. This is like, this is the element I want to have. So I need to sort of look into a person who really wants this. And then, of course, coming from this corporate entrepreneurship background, I noticed I enjoy working with clients who actually work with business professionals because not only I, I can help those clients because I was in their shoes, I also know their clients. So it's I've been able to refer clients to my clients. I've been able to help them with their sort of content and everything because I know their clients. I used to be that that client myself I, I know a lot of friends and like people in my network so this is basically this is the ecosystem I'm familiar with and this has taken some time to get to this point but this is what excites me about the business this type of working with this type of person who's high caliber who's already educated most of the people I work with they actually have much more experience than me it is so smart 20 years of experience in HR is like another client of mine is an executive coach who already coaches CEOs, uh, develop their career. There's another one who's a conflict resolution expert working with these high level professionals. These people, they don't need so much of my knowledge. They, they mostly need my, my uh, creativity. They need the safer space I provide to them. And this is something I'm really enjoying. This Spending time with these kind of people energizes me. I learn from them. It just, it's, it's like where I want to be. And this is, you know, in the past, maybe I used to make the money, but I didn't have this. I was just kind of like, hmm, yeah, it just lets this hour to, to be over, you know? <laughs> yeah, isn't it? But the thing is, this is important because when you start your own business and you, a lot of time were doing it, they do like, there must be more meaning to my life. I'm looking for financial reward. Yes. But I'm also looking to do something that I was born to do. That's really yeah. It's exciting. So when you then find yourself where you attract wrong clients, where you work with not the right people, the ones that don't excite you, that maybe can't afford your service, that don't value your solutions, it could be very demotivated, draining, in fact. Imagine just like sitting on calls or like working with people that just you find draining. You're going to be drained at the end of the day and thinking, what's the point? I might as well stay in the nine to five job. Uh, where here it's actually worse. So this is really important. This is actually important, the caliber, the excitement of clients. But also what I love about it is you're fully in control. You can yeah. change tomorrow exactly who you're attracting. You know exactly how to attract and filter down your type of people. I mean, we'll talk a lot about and let's share more how now you know exactly where the client is coming from. You have systems, you have really predictable way, rinse and repeat way of what to do, what to say, how to do it, really nail down messaging. And just knowing exactly who your client is going to be is powerful. Yeah, yeah. And of course, this is not something that happened to me overnight. We worked together. You know, when, when I joined you, I had a different niche and I was coming. I was first, I was coaching a lot of fashion and art people, a lot of e-commerce, jewelry people, jewelry businesses. And then I was like coaching pretty much anyone, all kinds of stages of business. And there was a phase I was coaching people built businesses on the side of corporate jobs. I still, I mean, what I do, a lot of people I work with, they have corporate jobs, but that's not really the key part of what we do. The key part is growing their coaching business. But I went on this journey of experimenting with a lot of different niches. And then I found like, this is where I'm most qualified, most excited. I mean, my genius. And I don't spend so much time preparing, you know, when I get new clients, I don't need to do research or anything. It's just the energy is right. This was pretty much the session with them. It, I don't need to do so much to actually do. Sometimes I'm like, oh gosh, I'm being paid for this. This is so much fun. 
But but it's that when you're working with the with the right niche, with the right client that you're most excited, you're most qualified to work with, it's also easy. You also have productivity. You don't need productivity hacks because you're just performing in a in a state of flow. You're performing from your best sort of a state. So this is there are a lot of things that come with this. But yeah, it was a journey to get to here. Yeah, isn't that amazing? But also predictability. I think what I love yeah. is you're now in control, your predictability, you also created signature systems. Yeah. You need signature methodology, signature framework, signature systems based on your experience, based on your expertise, which has really helped you set up your own lane, craft your own lane in the whole space and the whole noisy space, which is really important because of course you are a business coach. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's so important. But also being in control of your income being in control of right you have goals you know exactly what to do to meet them uh is so so powerful yes and i'm so glad you brought up the topic of methodology i'd forgotten about it because one of the key foundational aspects of that sort of a stability that simple business that consistency is actually everyone needs to know their methodology and with coaches everyone has sometimes it's very difficult to articulate your style the the unique way that you create results for people but once I knew that, it's it's one of those things that is so natural. You take it for granted. You just don't know how it's happening. So it takes time to actually bring it to paper. But once I knew that, it becomes easy to explain it to people. And then when you explain it to people, because what do, what do people want? I think people who come to me, they just want more certainty in their business. Why would they pay someone to, to sort of help them? They just want higher probability of getting results. So... As a business coach, my job is to, to show them that and that methodology, when I present it, I mean, you usually do it in the master. I was like, this is people, this is how I create results for my clients. If you don't like this or if it doesn't feel right for you, then probably we, we are not meant to work together. That's it. Because I cannot suddenly become someone else mm. just to sort of serve you. It, it, this is how it works. And it's so important for every coach to work on that to know the methodology, because that would be the basis of not only your work, but also your marketing, your your communication, your messaging, everything. Yeah. And what I love about this, I think so many people get distracted right now online by hacks, by this thing, by this hashtag, by this. But all of that is frankly a noise. If you don't have these key foundations yes. set up and working in your business and the way you know it's working, if you have predictable income, you know exactly where your next client is coming from, you know exactly how to filter and get your right people to the door that you feel passionate about. Like if, if at least one of those things is missing, that means you have a messaging problem. You have the problem that needs fixing. But people get derailed into those hacks, streaks, trends. And remember, they're fleeting things. They think that's going to be here tomorrow, but they're going to wait tomorrow, you know, next day. They're just, they're not something that you can really build a business on. And this is what I love. I love neuromarketing and this really rinse and repeat systems because it works with human psychology. So the reason why this messaging is so powerful is because it works with human decision psychology. We take people powerfully through this system, through this powerful intentional steps that they have to go through before they buy. Like if one of the steps is missing, it's not going to work. You're going to have leaks in the funnel. So if at the moment, if you are listening and you have masterclasses you run in launches, you have webinars, but people are not buying. Well, the thing is, you don't have that system in place. It's very different. What Sarah, what you have, what we've implemented and what's really powerfully working for you is a really powerful system that filters, that attracts, gets you powerful clients that want to work with you. Yes. That's the difference. Exactly. Yes. And it's, it's something, you know, it, you really need to tune into the business, really, really get honest. That's also the first thing, actually. It's uh, there are a lot of things that, you know, I, I don't want to sort of criticize the gurus, but we have so many big gurus in the coaching industry. They have built their businesses 10 years ago when the online world was functioning differently and they have built the empires and they have this massive marketing budget and whatever they start to promote becomes the thing and it's not only with the coaching industry even in the business world you know and a certain type of a strategy becomes trendy all business schools start to teach that I mean when I was doing my my business school it was like the blue ocean strategy that was like the fashionable thing it's still it's it's a good strategy but we have to learn I think that the most important thing we have to learn is that we need to have this critical 
view on everything. We can't just take this sort of templates and success strategies that created success with someone else as like, oh, this is going to work for me. Just because someone made millions using a certain strategy doesn't mean that would work for you. So this is also something that people have to learn to create their own systems. Totally. I think that's so important. And um, this is where I think people, a lot of times, they will fall to. They will use big brands, big brand names. But the reality is, remember uh, what Amy Porterfield can do and put a story in her, you know, put a link in her stories that Tonya Robbins can do. And they will make sales because they have huge personal brand that has been established for many years. It's not going to work for you if you just maybe a year in, two years, three years in, and you don't have that big personal brand. So therefore, the strategy, the messaging, the marketing needs to be different. And actually, most people do need this custom support, which is I love what you do. And I know that's what excites me as well, is what people, when they get custom support, personal support, that's what really makes the difference. Exactly. And I remember when we started working together, because I had checked pretty much all the possible coaches out there, I had my credit got ready looking for <laughs> the right person. And what I liked uh, uh, in your work was that you had, I, I could have your eyes on my, uh, on my slides, on the presentation, checking things with you. Is this, is this the right word to, to use for this? And this is something that, you know, you cannot get this by reading a book. You cannot get this by uh, getting a, a a course someone you need this objective safe space someone professional eye to look at things uh to to sort of get these things right this is not something one can do in isolation so yeah this is also what changed for for me and I also noticed okay I have a group program I join group programs nothing wrong with them but sometimes you just need that one person to to look at your business to sort of be the mirror for you and you can share things you cannot share in a group and uh, it, that personal connection, there is power in it that you cannot get anywhere else. And I understand it's an investment. It's not that easy, but this is where real magic is being created. Totally. This is how I could create these results. Imagine I me, mean, you have a course, you probably could also sort of market your course and say, people go watch it. But what really helped, I mean, that course was, of course, helpful, but what really helped was having you personally, those sessions we had together. And I want to offer that to people who work with me too. Yeah, it's really powerful because that's the gap. Um, you know, you say, if I were to say, do you have any ideas how you can make million dollars in your business? Most people will have, give me seven ideas and give yeah. me some way of doing that. But if you tell them, why haven't you done it yet? Because just knowing something and actually doing and implementing is a huge gap. It's like, I might conceptually understand how to climb Mount Everest. Like I can I can conceptually get what they're doing and what is required. Like they climb, they get this bag and they just get to the top. Like it's not magically, it's not rocket science. But am I safe by myself on the mountain? And can I do it tomorrow? Of course not. Yeah. And the same thing in business. You really need a lot of support. If you look at all the best companies in the world, well, why do they spend so much money on consultants, coaches, assistants? Why do they do that? Why is it such a big light item of PL? Because that's what gives them success. Like that no one does it alone. Like that's such a fall, it's such a myth that people think, well, they've just achieved it by themselves. Everyone gets help. Exactly. So powerful. And let's say uh, we talked a lot about kind of some of the things that you st you see that you maybe stand against in this space. Um, is there anything that comes to mind? I don't like drama. I don't like it. You know, there is this thing about vulnerability. We all know as leaders, vulnerability is so important. I think people get lost in that. You know, sometimes I, I go on LinkedIn, on Instagram, someone's crying, sharing like how they were cheated by this person, talking too much about drama. That's uh, turn like that puts me off. I, I don't really like that. I don't want to have that in my business. And I think vulnerability uh, the way i understand it is something that you have to work out with your th therapists coaches when there is like a lesson learned when you healed from it you can teach something to others and you can share it with others but getting too lost in drama will attract people who are also in drama so this is something i do not like i don't practice it for my business and uh, yeah i also don't really like it when i see it outside i would like to have like uh, somewhere that we can share positive messages not that we are hiding any reality 
But I think we are in this space to learn from each other. And yeah, so this is one of the things I don't write enough. And of course, you know, for me personally, integrity, honesty, authenticity, that is very important. That's also what I bring to my business. And also, I know this is what my clients like about me, just showing up as who I am. Yeah. Just taking a bit of a work and healing and personal uh, development to get here. This is what I'm proud of. So anything that is not in an alignment with that, that would be a little uncomfortable for me. But in, and that's such a beautiful thing. And I think what you've been able to do is really build a business around your strength and being very, you know, clear. And that take, took work, tell some soul, soul searching, some reflection. And we certainly work together on a lot about that, on that is to get to a stage where actually your business reflects what you want, who you are. And yeah. therefore people that work with that are perfectly aligned. And the alignment is that they go through the filtering process and they're deeply connected and they're a good match and a good fit. Uh, is so important. And this is where that reflection is so important because you just, it's so difficult to do this on your own. In fact, it's impossible to do this on your own. You don't know your strength many times. You don't know what's unique about your way. It's very difficult to build your own systems and methodology and craft your own lane because you're frankly too close to your own staff. If someone's like really great chef and they're just like amazing in the kitchen, it's so easy for them. So they just, they, they have this assumption, well, it's so easy for me. Therefore, it must be so easy for everyone else. Well, the truth yeah. is, it's just there's such an innate, natural ability, natural strength that unless they are able to package it and really understand it, they won't be able to market it. And that's most cases where business owners really struggle as well. Yeah, exactly. Business or any, any form of success, it's not happening in isolation. We are who we are in relation to other people. So if we want to do this in isolation, we're kind of breaking the rules in the wrong way. <laughs> and I think this is something everyone has to understand in order to see how we are being perceived, how, how we are experiencing the world. We need to be doing this in relationship with others. We need to involve other people in, in our businesses. Otherwise, we are, we are going to lose feedback. It's almost like driving the car without that uh, mirror, side mirror and the, the front mirror. You, you, you just look at, your, your, like the, at the road, but you don't know what is going on behind you. So this is basically this, to be able to experience the world with true empathy, we need other people <laughs> to, uh, to surround us with and give us feedback. Yes, absolutely. And I always say it's, um, and I think sometimes, you know, people, obviously they have different experiences and a lot of people, certainly, uh, the, you know, a lot of some of the women in Powerhouse CEO program, they've been burnt out in the past by some of the decisions they have made. And they're like, oh my word, I'm not investing again. Like it's yeah. become such a, almost a trauma, yeah, uh, almost a trauma to make investment again, to trust yourself, to do it again. Um, and let's talk a little bit about that. Like, what would you tell someone who's maybe sitting on the fence, who maybe wants to join the program, wants to dive deep into my world, but maybe hesitating, especially maybe has been burnt out in the past? You tell me who hasn't been burnt out. You know, it's part of the journey. It, it is what it is. You know, like every other product we buy, sometimes they don't turn out as we plan. Sometimes it has to do with us. Sometimes it has to do with the provider of that service and product. So turning that experience into, oh, this doesn't work for me. That's just found it's wrong on a foundational level. So <laughs> I would say this is something to, to work on. And then if you see, like, if you sense like, okay, this is, this is the program that can help me. This is the person I think I resonate with. You can always book a discovery call. That's what it's created for. You know, nobody comes to you and pushes you to, to buy something. You always, with the right coaches, you always have the opportunity to have a discussion and check if the energy is right. If you see all of this is right, tick, 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 then, you know, I would wonder what, what stops you. And there's also something else I want to share is that when it comes to business investments, in the past, I used to say, oh, I used to sort of tell myself, oh, can I afford this? Do I have the money for it? Mm. But then now I always try to make decisions from my future self, my most empowered version, like, or imagine some of these people I look at role model, like, would that person, how would they invest? Would they kind of sit around and think, oh, should I do this? Should I spend money on this or not? Or would they just, like, how would a millionaire, for example, make decisions? Like looking at all these people, how they are running their lives. It's like, it, it, it's not always making decisions from our fears, from where we are now. Sometimes also making decisions from our 
uh, older version or more yeah. expensive. What and also we always happen? yeah we always think what we're going to lose but actually we're missing the point of stuff that we're going to gain yeah um and i know certainly for sure one thing you know money you can always get make yeah time you can't get back exactly so time is so much more valuable than money i think that's the reality of it and i certainly know for every investment i have made it's more about shortcut it's more about invest myself and actually one of the some of the bad experiences what i've learned also really important lesson i've learned this is i don't want to run my programs or my containers that way here's the things i'm going to avoid and never do what that person is doing and that was worth the investment that was worth that learning that experience was worthwhile so actually that's another lens to look at say what have you taken out what have you learned from your past ex experiences because at the end of the day every step we make is a stepping stone to our destination to who we come and i think your story is such a powerful example of that like you had a fashion business you made some really powerful mistakes and they what allowed you to be successful now without them well who knows but they really, everything we experience in our life has really positions us for a next step in the future. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, you know, this program, I remember like that it didn't take me long to sort of make that decision. But I also know when, when you sort of talk to that coach that is right for you, you know, everything is like tick, 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 tick. It's right. But sometimes fear gets in the way. you like, will this work? I think like if you see you resonate with someone, you have already consumed some of the content. You think this person can support you. You you would feel more energized with this person. If the reason you're not proceeding with the decision is just, mm, I don't know, then uh, you, you're not going to move on in life. This is going to show up in other ways in your life. It's if, Even if you meet another coach, I don't know, who's like who's also good, you, you will go through this cycle again. So this is something to reflect on. So I would, you know, this program, of course, for, for me and all the other ladies in that program, it has worked so well and we've, we've learned so much. We have collaborated with each other. It's It has just changed so much. So so it, it works so well for me. But I also know going through that decision-making process, I could also not make that decision. I could also sit in my like, Maybe I I uh, buy this book and try this and wait another month. Maybe a miracle happens. I was also very close to that too. So yeah, powerful decision. So celebrated that decision, celebrating that risk you took, the uncertain, the uncertain risk you took in a step, and actually how much it paid off. And look at you, three hundred clients later, with so much success, so much celebration in your business, and really working with the most fantastic clients. So huge celebration, Sarah! You're amazing. So tell more to people who you work with, uh, what kind of problems you solve, and what's the best way where they can reach out, learn more about what you do, and also, of course, we will share that infamous freebie in our show notes um tell our listeners more thank you so much and thank you for your support you know we've done so much together I'm, I'm really proud of that relationship and what came out of it so i have only one freebie and that's called how to get your first five coaching clients i at the moment i basically work with leadership coaches executive coaches or even business coaches who are new in the business they just got certified or they're working in the corporate world but they want to start their own businesses. So they have the experience, they have the knowledge, but they want to start a new business on their own. I help them with getting their first five clients. Simple as that. And my freebie is, is about the foundations of that. When they download that, then they will get some more uh, sort of uh, video trainings from me. It's all about how to get your first clients because getting your first clients is much more challenging than getting your I don't know, hundred next hundred clients. This is this the process you have to go through is very different than those who are scaling their already functioning businesses. So this is the area I'm focused on. And the freebie I have is just a, a few of four or five pages of PDF, basically super simple. It's all about that. And people get results with that, just that. Powerful. So powerful. So we'll leave the details in the show notes. And of course they can reach out to you on Instagram, on LinkedIn, 
Um, so amazing to have you here, Sarah, today. Thank you for being and sharing your wisdom. And it's been such a pleasure working with you. Uh, I have to say, it's been just, a, you're an absolutely phenomenal human being, so rooted. I think what I really love about the way you run your business and the way you do everything is really rooted in your values. And I'm sure this is what your clients and everyone knows you will absolutely celebrate as well that you're rooted in your values the honesty the integrity the professionalism that really care and deep love for everyone who you interact with is just more powerful than anything else so huge success huge celebration for you and guys if go ahead and follow sarah online find her on all the platforms and you will absolutely be blown away with her expertise thank you sarah thank you so much and i'm so grateful for your support thank you very much Thank you. Bye. Bye.